Hello and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We just hit the top of the hour, so we'll give folks a few minutes to join and then we'll get things kicked off here. So uh, give us a few more minutes and then we'll dive right in. All right, everybody, uh, for those who just joined, uh, we're going to kick things off, being that there's a few minutes after the top of the hour. Uh, welcome to our webinar, Powering Up Your EHR with Patient Engagement. Uh, my name is Pete Fenton, and along with me joining you today is Fran Saperstein. Uh, just a quick disclaimer before we start, I have to mention that this presentation is intended for informational purposes only and does not constitute any financial, legal, medical, or consulting advice please consult with your legal counsel or other qualified advisor to ensure compliance with applicable laws, regulations, and standards. Um, so these two wonderful people you see here, uh, Pete and Fran, uh, appreciate Fran for hopping on. I'll give her a second to introduce myself, uh, introduce herself, excuse me. And uh, thanks for being here, Fran, take it away. All right, thanks for having me. I'm Fran Saperstein. I'm the Chief Operating Officer and Practice Manager of my husband's medical practice, which is a specialized practice um, in complex neurological cases. And I'm excited to be here and, have, and talk to you about Athena and Clara. Awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, just to introduce myself quickly, I'm Pete Fenton. I am one of the practice specialists here at Clara. I've been in healthcare, communication, and patient engagement space for about six or seven years. And worked for a bunch of different vendors and happy to share some time with Fran to talk about Clara and how we work with our Athena practices today. So just take a quick look at today's agenda so you know what to expect. Uh, for the first 45 minutes, we will take a look at how technology is transforming the way we deliver healthcare. We'll dive into the patient engagement and what that really means look at potential benefits of using an interoperable EHR and patient engagement tool. And lastly, we'll take a brief look at how Clara's patient engagement platform interfaces with Athena Health. Uh, at each stage of the presentation, I'll open up the floor to Fran so she can share some of her experiences and insight into how the Center for Complex Neurology uses technology to help improve efficiency and patient satisfaction. The last 10 minutes, we'll do an open Q&A where you'll be free to ask any questions directed towards either myself or Fran. And if you think of a question that you'd like to ask during the webinar, please definitely add it to the Q&A section in your window. We'll try to get to as many of them as we can. And those that we don't get to on the demo, uh, we'll be sure to get to you after uh, we've done and followed up. Lastly, super excited to share that in addition to sending you the recording and slides from our webinar, we will also be giving you an exclusive access to our latest white paper, how to get more out of your EHR with patient engagement tool. This white paper dives further into the topic we'll be discussing in today's webinar and is a great resource if your practice is looking for any additional ways 
to help improve efficiency with technology. Make sure to check your email inboxes after the event for the link to access the white paper. And of course, if you're looking for additional tips and tricks for your practice, you can check out our website at clara.com. So finally, we will get started. So how technology is transforming the way we deliver healthcare. Uh, just to get started, we're gonna take a look at some of the ways technology is transforming the way medical practices are delivering care in today's healthcare landscape. I'd like to highlight this quote by Chartis's group chief innovation officer in the 2022 Future of Healthcare report. Success is not merely measured by adoption of technologies, but rather the impact those technologies have on increasing access, outcomes, and patient satisfaction with their experiences. It is no longer sufficient to just have digital access points. They must serve as connected pathways for patients to easily receive care. So at the heart of it all, you're likely in the healthcare industry to help people by providing quality care to your patients. That's why it may be a good idea to look for interoperable healthcare IT solutions that help practice better able to meet the evolving needs of its patients, offer a higher quality of care, and also address the crippling physician burnout and staff overwhelming. Ultimately, we believe it is important to help you get back to the core job of providing medical care and we don't want technology or communication to be a barrier, but an asset in providing that care. Why is healthcare stuck in the past? What, well, with all this being said, there are many medical practices that are still stuck in the past. While it may be hard to believe, some practices today are still using paper forms and fax machines, playing phone tag and using filing cabinets to store paperwork and so on. As a result of these inefficiencies, many practices are facing challenges such as administrative burden, inefficient workflows, financial concerns, and poor patient satisfaction, but it doesn't have to be that way. In fact, the Future of Healthcare report conducted by the HIMSS Trust Partnership found that nine in 10 healthcare systems in the US will be in some state of digital transformation in the next five years. Speaking to everyone attending this webinar, as Athena Health customers, you are likely well on your way thanks to an EHR system that helps achieve better patient engagement and care coordination. Now let's dive into what the typical practice tech stack or technologies that a healthcare organization uses to run its day-to-day -day operations. What the tech stack looks like in the practice depends on a number of factors, practice size, specialty, care model, patient population, and more. But the areas that tech can streamline typically fall into three categories, administrative, communication and clinical with your EHR system sitting at the core. Your EHR allows you to centralize many of the clinical administrative activities of your practice, which may include patient records and medical histories, appointment documentation and treatment plans, lab data and radiology reports, and other demographic and protected health information. There's an administrative technology that may allow you to manage the day-to-day -day administrative tasks, such as appointment scheduling, insurance, payment collection, HR activities, and even marketing and lead gen. Moving into clinical, this technology can allow you to do tasks like confirming a patient's eligibility for certain medical services or medications, submitting and managing prior authorization requests, and even electronically sending prescriptions to a pharmacy. Finally, we have communication technology, which encompasses both internal staff collaboration and external patient communication and engagement. Unfortunately, communication can be a major pain point for many practices today due to so many touch points in the patient journey. These steps leave room for error, especially when the communication takes place solely through the phone. To sum it up, while this list of potentially, potential technology may seem overwhelming, it's worth noting that you're not required to have every type of tech on this list. Instead, look for technology that'll fit your practice's individual needs and will be interoperable with your existing technology, helping you to sync data between your systems, avoid duplicative data entry, and eliminate toggling between many applications. Now we're gonna take a look at the Center for Complex Neurology's tech stack. Uh, I'd like to hear, uh, hand the phone over to Fran here to tell us a bit how technology has been playing a part uh, in their clinic. Fran, prior to adopting technologies, can you tell us about some of the pain points and headaches that your practice experienced? 
So we, um, thank you, uh, first of all. So we actually started our practice after being part of a larger practice. In that larger practice, I was the administrator for a while and our biggest pain point was patient communication. Patients couldn't get messages to us. They couldn't get messages answered. They couldn't get through on the phone. I didn't have enough staff that was following up on voicemails. We had no, um, no way really to connect with our patients in an easy electronic way. When we started our own practice, that was definitely a focus point for me. So I knew that we had to have something on board that would do a bunch of things. One, make sure we didn't need a ton of staff to answer phones. Uh, two, make sure that there was always a record of every phone call and every way that we communicate with the patient. Um, and three, we had to make sure that our patients could reach us at any time during open business hours. And when we went searching, Clara was the answer for that. Um, we did start with a different EHR um, that did not coordinate with, with Clara, but we onboarded Clara first. That was our first purchase when we uh, started the practice. I wanted to make sure that we were streamlined and we were as paperless as possible. I never bought us a fax, regular fax machine. I never got us um, large um, filing cabinets. We were going to be streamlined from the beginning. And that meant also figuring out how to do patient intake in a way that didn't require a lot of paperwork. So while Clara did not do that at the time that we started, they did by the time that we actually needed to have that in place. We also use Athena, obviously, and then we use Microsoft uh, products, Office 365, to communicate within the office and uh, use Microsoft Teams. But for the most part, Clara is our main point of contact with our patients, including telemedicine. Awesome, I uh, appreciate that, Fran. I mean, one of the things that comes to mind uh, that, that poked out to me was, you said we didn't wanna have to hire a million FTEs um, yeah. I know that's something that we kind of talked about where we can use technology, um, not in place necessarily of people, but just to make the people that we have more efficient and make their lives a bit easier. Um, can you share like maybe just, you know, how many FTEs you thought that Clara saved and uh, maybe some of the reasons as to how the technology, not just Clara, but also with Athena has helped improve efficiency for your existing staff uh, as well as the patient satisfaction end. Yeah, absolutely. So um, for us, we started out in someone else's office. So we were renting, sub renting one exam room in someone else's space. So I had to be careful about the staff that I was using um, and had on board in the very beginning. We were building our own space. It just, you know, that takes time and it's out of our control to some extent. So I started with just two employees and myself and the provider. And I knew that was all we could handle both financially and in terms of space. So we needed to find a way knowing that there were at least a thousand patients that were following us because of how specialized we are, that we could immediately connect with our patients. Um, and so Clara provided that for us. We were able to upload e-documents um, that like, like PDF files that they could print out at home or sign um, eventually on, online so people could provide us all the medical information that we needed, all those, all those required forms as a new practice. We basically needed to start from ground zero with privacy policy, financial policy, medications, because we weren't able to take any of the medical records with us. So it, medical records requests, all of that needed to be taken care of. And Clara provided us the opportunity to send those things in a HIPAA compliant way, which was also key. In terms of FTEs, I don't have a receptionist. I don't have somebody answering the phones. Clara takes that over for me. We use between the phone tree on Microsoft Teams and Clara with, with texting, we get to every patient in some way. They get something personalized, whether it's a note back from us through Clara or someone on the other end of the line or an immediate phone call back within two hours if they leave a voicemail. Awesome, thank you, appreciate the insight. Understanding patient engagement. Uh, we're gonna move on to the patient engagement specifically to understand uh, what it really is and why it may be important for practices to consider. 
Healthaffairs.org defines patient engagement as a concept that combines patient activation with various interventions designed to increase and promote positive patient behaviors. At a high level, patient engagement refers to the practice of helping your patients be more proactive about their health care. When a patient is engaged, they may be more likely to manage preventative care and address chronic conditions by booking appointments and seeing their doctors. In many cases, some patients today are more eager than ever to take control of their health, but, may, but they may feel lost. In addition, staff may feel overworked and overwhelmed just trying to simply keep up. This may be due to the number of steps involved in the patient journey as seen above. And in many cases, there's a clear disconnect between patients and their providers. To help bridge the gap between activated patients and burned out physicians, medical practices need to leverage the right tools. Specifically, those that streamline appointment scheduling for patients, ease of workflow and efficiencies for providers, and keep providers at the top of mind for patients. This is where patient engagement tools really come into play. Just a quick poll that we wanted to have everybody chime in on. Uh, how many hours per day do you spend playing phone tag with patients? Phone tag could be any number of things where you call voice mailbox is not set up, a voice mailbox may be full, um, or a call that's not returned simply. So any time that you're leaving a message and not getting a live person on the phone, that would be kind of the, the classification of phone tag. Uh, so if we just have a minute or so, if you could just pop in your response, we would appreciate it. And then I will report the results in just a few seconds. Give it just another 10 or 15 seconds. Don't be shy, folks. Completely anonymous. Um, this is Fran. I just thought I'd jump in and explain how we've noticed um, that our calls have actually decreased um, since the full adaptation of Clara's um, integration. So it was hard for patients. They were used to calling a large practice and playing phone tag and getting messages and not getting any response back. So what we were used to seeing was that the patients would get very frustrated. We very quickly trained our patients that if they engaged with us through Clara, they would get a faster answer and it would be more specific to their individual need because we would easily be able to open up the, um, the EHR at the same time as we were chatting with them and answer any specific questions or directly get confirmation from a provider to review their prescriptions. And when they started to see that efficiency, they really adopted and really now stick to Clara as their primary way of reaching us. Thank you, Fran. Uh, just was informed in an internal note, I misspoke. The results will be after the, uh, the end of the presentation and we'll be sure to highlight that. Um, kind of piggybacking off what Fran was saying, obviously there are hours, FTE hours attached to a lot of the calls that don't get to a desired end result as well. So operationally we're able to save 
hours uh, that quickly add up between MAs, uh, your schedulers, your billers, really across the board when you're making all these phone calls that don't end up with a scheduled appointment or a paid bill. Allowing patients to communicate on the channels they prefer. Different patients have different communication preferences. Uh, with a patient engagement platform like Clara, you can personalize that experience by offering multiple communication channels. For example, your younger patients may prefer to text, but your older patients may prefer to call. By offering both communication channels, you can allow patients to text while your phone lines are cleared for those who would rather call in. Or maybe they'd prefer to talk to you using the web chat directly on your website, or they like to receive appointment reminders through email. No matter how your patients choose to communicate, your phone lines may be freed up so that your practice can start closing the loop faster. Um, I think this is really important to highlight because oftentimes we hear from practices, my patients want a phone call. I know they want a phone call to, because that's a personal touch. Um, oftentimes we have this conversation and I, I think Fran would probably agree that simply offering the patient the option as to which they would prefer, I think is providing the highest level of service. So um, just, you know, piggybacking on these comments, we are freeing up the phone lines for people who do prefer a phone call versus a text. So the people that do adopt text, they're actually improving the experience for those who like a phone call, lowering wait times, getting them in touch with somebody quicker, eliminating a lot of that phone tag. Um, so I do think it's important to provide patients the option and let them choose which they would prefer. Streamline workflows by interfacing patient engage your patient engagement tool with your EHR. A patient engagement platform can help improve patient communication, increase operational efficiency, and ultimately lead to better care delivery for patients. These results are more likely if the platform can seamlessly interface with your EHR. This leads us to the next section of the webinar. Um, but first, we want to ask Fran a question or two before. Um, before adopting a patient engagement pa uh, platform, Fran, what challenges did you experience around patient experience and communication? The biggest issue was patients being able to get their questions answered um, and getting new patients in, uh, making sure that they were at the right place, making sure that they um, knew how they could reach us. And we weren't able to present a very um, professional front um, from for the initial contact. And now we know that patients can reach out to us and get either an immediate text directly from us or a phone call back, depending upon what they request, or both, if they request both. Um, and so it provides us with a lot of information um, and a lot more efficiencies. So patients aren't calling three and four times. Um, and it sets us apart from some of the larger health facilities. So a lot of the larger health plans are now, health companies um, are now um, so big that a patient can't get through and leave a message. And we used to have that challenge in the past practice we were with, and that was one of the first things we wanted to make sure that we didn't have a problem with. Great. And were you experiencing any patient complaints in the past around oh, wait yes. times or billing or even everything issues, like beat me yeah. to it. So, uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, everything. So, so um, I, as the administrator, I would get messages. I would get notes because patients couldn't reach us. They would send in the mail or they, they would come and drop off a sticky note for me saying, I can't reach anybody. I can't get to anybody. I never get my call returned. I can't get my medications on time. And it was, it was like I was fighting a fire every day, all day. And I was not just fighting one fire, I was fighting fires for seven providers at that time. So it was seven huge forest fires that I was trying to slap, to staunch at the same time every single day. And that's why when we went in to our own practice, we knew that we did not want that to happen. Customer satisfaction was going to be our number one issue. And I say customer, not patient, because Patient satisfaction from a medical standpoint, I knew we could deliver, but customer satisfaction in terms of the patient feeling taken care of and heard, uh, that was a key thing for us. And so Clara 
really helped us to decrease that. Occasionally we get someone who is older saying, why does nobody answer the phone? And it's like, we're already on the phone with another patient, um, but that's very occasional. And it's our 70 something year old patients or someone who can't read well because they have a visual impairment. Yeah, it's interesting that you said patient versus customer. Um, I think there's a lot of literature even you know, if you Google and surf the net right now about the commercialization of healthcare and, you know, people in most geographic areas do have an option to seek care elsewhere. So uh, I think looking at a, a patient as also a customer is uh, needing to provide that extra level of, of you know, pleasant experience or, or improved accessibility to make sure that they do continue to come back to seek care. Um, you know, they are happy with the care they're receiving, but if they can't get in touch with someone to schedule that care, uh, it's kind of like chicken or egg at that point. Potential benefits of connecting your EHR with a patient engagement tool. I uh, just want to move on to an additional kind of list of benefits. And uh, I like to think of Clara as an extension of your Athena EHR and PM. Um, we're not meant to replace things. We're meant to complement things. So I think using a third party vendor like a Clara uh, is helpful to improve the stickiness and the appreciation of the Athena product as well, being that we are tied so closely together. Um, I think one of the first potential benefits is streamlining workflows. So with a patient engagement tool that interfaces with your EHR and PM, you can oftentimes automate uh, a lot of tasks like appointment scheduling, reminders, post follow-up instruction and no-show engagement, uh, as well as intake billing and more. Um, being able to customize this messaging to the appointment types, the providers themselves, um, I think is really important does provide a personal touch. Uh, we're also providing people a digital handbook, um, if you will. So instead of handing somebody a paper packet that can be misplaced really easily or um, probably doesn't even make it into the home, it probably gets left in the car, people can access the information for their instructions right on their mobile device. And we all know that we don't go anywhere without our cell phones these days. So. Um, whether you're at work or school or a friend or family member's house, uh, you always have access to the information, whether it's nutritional advice, medication adherence instructions. And this really helps reduce a lot of incoming call volume to the practice because people have this information in the palm of their hand. So they're less likely to need to call into the practice. Um, by replacing phone calls with text and opting for digital paperwork, your staff is also going to see uh, a lot more time to focus on patients in front of them uh, and other engagement strategies, whether it's overdue screenings, somebody you haven't talked to in a while. Uh, and this is definitely gonna have a greater impact on the growth of the practice. The next potential benefit, uh, one that many of you are gonna like is less toggling between platforms. Uh, we know that we have a million different tabs and windows open constantly. So if we can eliminate one or two, makes it very much easier to work within those programs. So toggling between these apps uh, is a big time waster. It can be hard to find information and remember where you're looking for things. Um, and while every practice technology stack is different, having multiple platforms that don't connect can result in consistently having to go back and forth and back and forth. By choosing a patient engagement tool that interfaces with your EHR, like Clara and Athena, uh, you can see in this little picture above, is an image of our Chrome extension, which allows you to work within your Athena window and Clara in the same window, not having to bounce back and forth. Uh, and you can automatically sync with your EHR, allowing to work within one platform. So node and multiple screens, it's all on the same screen and you can seamlessly work uh, in the Athena portal as well as Clara. Physician burnout rates. Um, you can see here in a recent Mayo Clinic study found that physician burnout rates nearly doubled between 2020 and 2021, rising from about 38% to 63%. Likely due to work-related distress, this burnout has become a major problem for practices. With a streamlined EHR and patient engagement interface, practices are often able to do more in less time and may be able to decrease staff burnout. This in turn could help prevent unnecessary mistakes. Uh, I think giving people a few minutes in, in, throughout the day improves their, uh, you know, their performance or production patient facing as well. Really as simple as giving someone five minutes to get up and stretch their legs or go grab a cup of coffee 
may seem really little, but um, I've come to appreciate that working remote where uh, getting that time to, you know, take a break from your screen because you do have a little bit of time given back throughout your day can make a real difference. People leaving the office on time instead of having to catch up with a million voicemails that were left throughout the day uh, can really impact the practice and, and reduce the, the wear and tear on everybody from the front office to the provider. Next, being able to use a single platform to collaborate with other physicians and medical systems may allow your care teams to give patients their best and most up-to-date care possible. Uh, as you can see here, for example, Ben, who works at the front desk, is using Clara to send prior authorization for a patient's prescription. Previously, when coordinating with pharmacies and other third parties, it used to require multiple back and forth messages for you and your patients. Now you can collaborate with others with a centralized patient thread. And I know it's something Fran obviously mentioned, uh, they didn't want to buy a fax machine. Um, having a fax machine, I can't believe we still use them uh, in healthcare, but it, they do still exist. Um, I oftentimes share stories of um, selling durable medical equip equipment in a hospital where I would stand in a nurse's station, fax myself documents, only to see on my phone that there was an error message and there was a green check mark in the hospital triage station. So fortunately, I'm physically there, but there's just an unreliability and there's a lack of traceability when there's just papers stacking up in a fax machine. So having Clara be an extension to your pharmacy or a surgery center or uh, you know, a specialist like Fran's practice that you as a primary care might refer patients to, we can create one big connected care network where all the communication is housed in one place. Quality of care, when a medical practice streamline, streamlines workflows and leverages technology to do things like reduce no-shows, providers may have more time to see more patients or more time to spend with the patients they have and they can likely offer patients a better experience and care. This quality service may drive more positive online reviews and patient referrals to your practice. We all know the first thing people do is go to the Google machine when they're looking for a new provider. And one of the first things at least I look for is the reviews, how many reviews and the quality of the review, obviously. So if we can have patients with pleasant experiences leaving those positive reviews, it's only gonna improve or increase the top of the funnel for the practice as new people geographically move into your area and seek the care that your practice might be providing. Uh, another mic toss over to Fran. Uh, if you could give us some examples, Fran, of how the practice uses Clara to streamline communication um, and just the result of that uh, from staff and patient end. Yeah, so um, we built our practices, our practices and policies around Clara and its, its vast abilities. So our first conversation with the patient is a questionnaire of, are we the right place for you? Um, and asking about their insurance to make sure that we know what they have and what our ability is and isn't. So we get that initial screen part out of the way immediately. Then um, we send them forms to complete to become a patient. So they we have everything in advance as a specialist. Obviously, we like to have medical records in advance to not have to do the same thing over again that's already been done, not have our provider um, looking for information that is not in the record. So we use Clara to um, provide us with uh, medical records, if the patient has them, in particular testing, it, there's a, an opportunity to upload images and PDFs directly into Clara in a HIPAA compliant way, which has been a lifesaver for patients with large medical records, which is what we do. Um, and then the other piece of that is that after the appointment, we immediately contact the patient and tell them what's next. Here's what to expect. Thank you for seeing us today. Here's what you should expect. Here's, here's the cadence of what's gonna happen. And the next day they get, when the notice sign, they get copies of the labs to draw, copies of the referrals, copies of how to do certain things for certain labs or testing, things to be aware of. We will call you um, within the next two days to schedule this. If you are interested in scheduling directly through Clara, please you know, please let us know and we can do that as well. We let them know when their next appointment should be. So it's a way to engage them immediately. And then 
once that follow-up is scheduled or isn't scheduled, if it's been a while since we've heard from them, we use the appointment ticklers in, um, in Athena to help us then create a broadcast in Clara where we say, hey, you haven't seen us in X number of months and your providers wanted to see you in the next three weeks. They do get a reminder from Clara, I mean, from Athena, but that is a little less personal than what we do. We basically say, yours is for this. And we're very specific about what it is. We have several different templates that we use. And that has increased our patient volume for follow-ups more than we could have imagined by just sending that out six weeks, six, four to six weeks before the appointment needs to happen based on what the provider wanted. Patients are sick, they're busy, they don't have time to keep track of on their calendar of when is six weeks from my last appointment. So we do that and then in preparation for the appointment, again, we send them, here's what is your agenda? What are the top three things you wanna talk about in your follow-up? And have we got your medications right? And if there's something missing, is there something in particular you want the provider to know? They can let us know in that individual, in that information. And in between appointments, if they need an appointment sooner, they reach out to the provider. And if it's something that they didn't discuss in the last appointment, we'll often schedule them for an appointment. But if it's an extension of a question that was very specifically related to the last appointment, the provider may choose to either themselves or through the medical assistant, just answer that question. When they get really complex or it's a new issue, we obviously need to bring them in for some sort of an evaluation, whether it's telemedicine through Clara or it's direct um, an in-office appointment. Clara has really, it, it's just so integral into our practice and the patient engagement. I had two new patients in from out of town last week and I coordinated all of that through Clara and maybe two phone calls over a month versus a phone call every day, answering every question individually, um, being able to provide a patient with an outline of exactly what was gonna happen and what it was going to look like in writing so that as her anxiety grew about coming from out of state to see a new provider, she could look back at her phone and see exactly what was gonna happen. At just before 9 a.m., you're going to arrive. Here's what's going to happen. Here's who's going to come in. We're gonna do this. After the appointment, here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen at the end of your day. And the following day, we have you scheduled for this, this, and this. So it's very clear for the patient what's going to happen. And it engages them by decreasing their anxiety because they know exactly what's going to happen. It helps us to know that we have communicated to them in several different ways what their appointments are. They get their notice for check-in through, Ath through Athena, but on Clara, we we actually do a lot of communication with them to make sure that they are prepared for the appointment in ways that um, that just every patient has a different need and we're able to meet that need by going directly to the patient and engaging that conversation, answering those questions. Awesome, thank you so much, Fran. I know we talk a lot about uh, practice to patient. Um, how have you been able to use Clara's internal communication with triaging requests and yeah. dropping internal notes. Um, uh, as you know, obviously, there's not just one inbox for Clara, there's multiple inboxes. Um, so if you could kind of shed a little bit of light on how the internal yeah. collaboration works between you, know, you Dr. Saperstein, and, and the rest of your staff. Yeah, so because we're such a small practice and because we're so specialized, there are often questions that the staff has before they answer a question in Clara. And they'll tag me or they'll tag the provider and say, um, I think this is what you want me to do, but let me confirm so that we're not giving wrong information to the provider. And we use the at tag a lot for that. I also use the automated sorting in Clara so that everything doesn't end up in one inbox. Everything automatic that's a medical question automatically goes to the clinical staff. They then look at those and determine whether it's something they can answer or the provider needs to help them with. They can sometimes use the at option to reach the provider. Other times they just know the answer and they can just answer it directly. When it's a question about scheduling or a new patient, it comes to the schedulers. If it's a question about testing, it goes to our testing person. 
So we have used not just, Clara, not just to communicate with patients, but also to make efficiencies happen. So it used to be, you know, in an, in an old practice, we would have one person answering a phone and that person would have, you know, 25 people they had to send the individual phone calls to and they had to, in two seconds, pretty much determine what this patient needed and hopefully send them to the right place. Clara takes the information, reviews it and figures out where we need to send it. In addition, within the office, we use it a lot to just say, hey, just FYI, here's what this patient is saying, or want you to know this patient is here. So just communicating on a day-to-day -day basis and keeping connected as a practice that has a rather large office, it's, it makes life so much easier. I know when someone is going on break, I know when someone is taking a patient back, and I know when a patient is in the office and has a question and I need to intervene. Great, thank you so much. I'll look at a Clara and Athena. So Clara helps seamlessly connect patients with providers and our hyper customizable rules and automations, which we call our Clara assistant, mimics Athena's practices, internal workflows and processes. Add our phone integration and you have a system of engagement used throughout the entire practice that may help reduce call volume and improve patient experience. A lot of what Fran obviously just talked about, the efficiencies that we create around the texting functionality and internal collaboration. A deeper dive into how the systems look together. Uh, this image here gives you a little snapshot and with the interface, Practices are able to sync patients into Clara and manually export information back into the EHR. So as you collect forms or have maybe a medical conversation via text, you're able to, with a few clicks, export documents, pictures, uh, videos, whatever the patient sends, maybe a, a medical record from a previous uh, provider. And practices can also collect paperwork digitally, automate pre and post visit instructions by appointment type, reschedule no-shows and help increase patient retention with follow-up messages. Um, even we can get really granular with the customization, even to the point where if there are two providers that have the same appointment type, but prefer their patients to prepare in different methods, we can send provider specific instructions where obviously we know maybe a provider that is fresh out of med school may do things differently than someone that's been practicing for 30 years. So having your staff not have to remember that and just set it and forget it type of experience um, is going to eliminate uh, errors and, and keep the providers happy as well as the patients. When it comes down to how all these communicate, uh, how all these communication channels will affect your staff members' processes, all the communication will be centralized into one patient thread that is visible to anyone on your staff that would need to see it. So if a patient has a billing question, the billing department's notified, or if they have a question about the medicine that they're prescribed, the clinical staff gets notified. These centralized collaboration across the teams and even third parties such as a pharmacy will help improve patient care and unify their experience. Clara helps simply commu uh, helps simplify communication. So your staff may, have, may not have to play internal phone tag to solve patient problems. Uh, Clara is also not something that you have to babysit we set alerts up based on your responsibility when you receive a new message that's pertinent to your workflow. We can set up a number of different alerts so you don't have to constantly have your Clara inbox open. We can set up browser notifications, uh, email alerts, also push notifications to a mobile device if you have employees working remotely or providers are on call over the weekend. Turning it back to Fran, um, if you could let us know just really kind of how Clara interfaces with Athena and how you use that interoperability uh, and what benefits that you've seen from the interface that we have between Clara and Athena. The interface has been a game changer for us and it's it's improved um, at, even over the time that we've been using, we only have been with Athena for 11 months and even within that time, the Clara uh, assistant capability, Clara Plus has been very helpful for us. So. Um, one of the things that we can do is we can send out messages to patients in advance without the staff having to set those up. I've got an, the automations going where if it's a 
appointment that is in the office, we automatically send out one set of things. If it's appointment that is via telehealth, it's another set. And then the other um, thing that it does is it allows us to um, prepare when the patient's there. So for example, we have um, patients who do telehealth and so we can just provide them with a link to the, the join here link in Clara for the integrated telehealth option. Um, if there's a if we have trouble, um, maybe the patient is, is having difficulty connecting, rather than going out somewhere else, they can use Clara to let us know that. Um, the, the Clara and Athena Health integration in terms of the, uh, we're getting some questions about what about um, the, the documents that come in, how easy are they to enter into the system? There are literally buttons to press and you can tell the system what type of product it is. So is it, is it a billing, question, billing paper? Um, so is it a cop, like a copy of your financial policies? Is it a um, historic medical record? Is it a, a patient diary? Is it the patient, patient agenda for the appointment? So that is one of the things that we can send out requests for through the Clara Assistant and then we can get them back and easily just press a few clicks to get it into the patient's chart. Great, I think uh, it's Diana, uh, Diana Johnson asked the paperwork integrated into the PDF format or directly in the chart. Uh, we can definitely show you how it works within, we have a live demo environment, uh, Diana, that we could if you have 15 minutes, uh, there'll be a way for you to schedule time with us. I think it's better to show you in the demo environment than try to explain it uh, while we're on the call. So um, please definitely schedule time uh, through the, the link that we'll provide and we can show you exactly what it looks like in the demo environment so you can see it firsthand. Um, so if you don't mind, uh, if you do have any other questions, please use the chat feature. Um, there was one thing that I had spoken to Fran about before we, uh, when we were prepping for the call, because it was just personally something that I hear a lot from practices and I just want to get her, her opinion on it. And it was in a time where we feel like we barely have enough time to do the things that we have to do to keep the lights on, you know, why adopt the new technology if you're not a current Clara user, um, you know, is the burden of setting it up, I guess, worth sacrificing a little bit of time where you just feel like there's no time to do anything. And I know that you've said, you know, you had Clara prior to Athena, so you kind of circled your practice around Athena, but I know it's burdensome and, you know, where do you fall on the priority list of, we love Clara, we just don't have the time to implement it. Yeah. So like when I talk to folks, um, you know, what would you tell them about just the onboarding process or the, the lift, if you will, of having to onboard Clara? Um, yeah, that's that's an excellent question. So, you know, when we started our practice, we started with Clara. So I sort of did go through that because our patients were used to having phone calls and we were starting a brand new practice. So I was, you know, starting a new corporation, creating, doing, you know, the contracting and everything. So I made it a priority for us to learn how to integrate Clara. And it was important because, again, one of my goals was customer satisfaction and once we got patients used to it, once I got the staff used to checking it and working within it, and I got the patients used to being able to get pretty much immediate answers to their questions, it became completely integrated. And it was a short, really short turnaround time. We had continued to tweak Clara as our practice changes, as our needs change. It is very easy to do. We worked with our customer service representative and our account representative and when I need to make a change, all I have to do is reach out to her and she will immediately get back to me. Um, if there's a question that I have that is more just about the program itself, I can immediately send a message to customer support and get a chat going. So it, while it is, it seems like a heavy lift, it may be a heavy lift for a short time. Over the long haul, it will save you so much in frustration, if nothing else because your patients won't be frustrated, you won't be frustrated, you can see the volume of work that's being done just by looking in Clara, you can see the entire conversation. That has been a game changer for us. 
where a patient says, well, you didn't tell us this, and we can point back to it and say, well, yeah, actually on this date, we did tell you this because it's all in that conversation that you and the patient have access to. Um, the patient obviously doesn't have access to internal information. Um, we're still careful about what we do through Clara um, on internal information, but it provides us with an opportunity to really engage with the patient and really understand what their needs are. It is worth every minute that we spend on it because it, without it, we would not be able to serve nearly as many patients as we do. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we had another question from Diana uh, for Fran. Why are you using Clara for telehealth versus the built-in Athena telehealth? So that's an excellent question. So built-in Athena telehealth um, within our contract would have been additional. I don't know what it is for others. Um, but we were already using Clara. So when the pandemic hit, Clara immediately worked to get an integrated telehealth part of their platform. And so we never switched from that because our patients are used to it. And um, it's very, it's, e it's user friendly. It is easy for the patient. And we just didn't see a need to add on an additional expense if we were, going, if we were building everything around Clara. Hope that answers your question, Diana. Now we have about 10 minutes left. Uh, I'm gonna pop up one more poll question and answer any other questions that come through the chat. If you wouldn't mind entertaining us, um, just wanted to find out if you would like for somebody from Clara to reach out to set up a personalized demo um, in the next few weeks or months or whenever works for you. Um, so if you don't mind, just pop it in your response. And if there are any other questions about Clara or to Fran specifically, uh, we'll hang out for another few minutes. Please feel free to pop them in the Q&A box. Yeah, Catherine, I see you had some more questions about how to message patients and some other things. So you have complete control over the timing of Clara being available. Um, you can, it's basically always there, but you can determine when you want to be notified or not. And no, you don't have to use your cell phone. Um, we, it's all done through the web app uh, of Chrome um, or um, going directly to the web, web app. We don't use smartphones. And in fact, we actually train patients to complete their forms by going to the patient.clara.com portal. Um, it uses the phone to use multi-factor authentication and that allows our patients to feel safe with their health information. And I haven't met a specialty that Clara wouldn't work for, to answer another one of your questions. Um, upstairs from us in our building, um, our a primary care provider saw that we were using Clara, and so they came down to ask me about it, and I showed them how we use it, and they quickly adopted it and couldn't be happier. Um, and then in turn, it, I think that's all the questions that I saw. Did you see something else? Oh, other features? that are built in that Athena Communicator doesn't have. Yes, so Athena Communicator um, does not currently allow us to create our own forms and have those signed. Um, and part of why we are so involved in Clara and have that as a big piece is, you know, as, a, as a, any practice does, we have specific questions that we